don't even know where I was at. So the Bible study went well. Uh, we've already had 1,300 hits on that, so we really appreciate that. Um, you can give in the link below. There is giving, and we'd love for you to do that for us, um, to donate, to mail checks in so we can continue to do what we do. We're going to have to buy things for, to do what we're doing, and it just is what it is. Uh, there's nothing else that we can do about that. Uh, so if you continue to give to us and, and support this, whether you're across the country or around the corner, we would appreciate you doing that. And there's a lot of different ways to do that. And if you go onto our Facebook page, you can see how to do that. Um, we have some videos out about how to do that. You can either donate online, you can mail a check in to us, and the address again is in the link down below, or you can drop it off here uh, Wednesday or Friday, uh, 8 to 10 in the morning or 5 to 7 in the afternoon. We do want you to stay safe and stay connected. Um, and we also want you to check on each other. Um, and what we'd like to do is for you to email us a video of you checking in on people. If you're calling them, if you're doing it on Facebook, send us a short little video with your phone. Just kind of shoot it, and we don't care what it looks like. But tell us how you're staying connected, and we'll put a little montage together, and we'll put it out there. One, so we can see each other, so we can see how we're taking care of each other. Uh, two, so that we can stay connected with each other, and we really want to do that. Uh, we do have a hotline out there. Again, it's our phone number. That link is in the description down below. We ask you to stay close to that uh, and call if you don't understand things. Right now, things are changing so fast. Uh, the governor comes out. The president comes out. The city county comes out. Things are changing. We had a discussion this morning for 30 minutes on who's over, who overrides who and who are we listening to and what are we doing. Uh, so if you don't understand it, we'll figure it out for you. You can call us if you need to do that. So without further ado, let's pray and we'll get started. Uh, Father God, we love you. God, we praise you in all of this. God, today we, we're going to talk about strength that we need to get through this. God, as believers, uh, we talked about our fears in our first of this series. We talked about our purpose. Today, we're going to talk about our strength and where we draw it from and why we can have a purpose and why we can continue to do what we do no matter what changes around us. Because our strength doesn't come from anything here on this earth. It comes from Jesus. So God, as we dig into your word and talk about it, I, I pray that you step out of heaven and step into me because there's nothing good in me but you. Father, we love you. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Let's get right off. We're going to go with Ephesians three fourteen through 21. It says, For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, for whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit and in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and the length and the height and the depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think according to the power at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. So I want to give you just a little background uh, of what's going on. So, uh, because uh, Paul's in prison, he mentions that he is, is imprisonment in th 3 1, 4 1, and 6 20. We know that he's in prison right now while he writes this. This letter should be dated somewhere around 62 AD when Paul was held in Rome. We know that in Acts 28. He's in prison, he's quarantined. Sound familiar? Huh. <laughs> it sounds familiar to a lot of us. I saw a Facebook post, it was kind of funny the other day, it said that don't forget to change your day pajamas into your, nine, your night pajamas by 9 p.m. That you should be changing. I got this post on here, and let me find the picture that I was going to talk to you about this morning. It's pretty funny, a little joke for you to kind of brighten it up. It said, I saw my neighbor Tammy out early this morning scraping the kit that the, my kid is a terrific student sticker off her minivan. Guess the first week I homeschooled and didn't go so well. We are quarantined, and Paul was quarantined. He was in prison, but he's still sharing the good news of Jesus. And that's the thing that, that's exciting for me, is that no matter what his circumstance, Paul always shared the good news of Jesus. He's still on mission. He didn't forget what his core value and mission was. It was 
Jesus. And I guarantee you, his situation was way worse than ours. I see some of your YouTube posts and Facebook posts about how you're cooking at home and what you're eating and, and what you're doing in your yard and, and how you're walking your dogs and how you're making your kids uh, day laborers at your house. So I see it going on. And remember, there's always someone somewhere that's worse off than you are. And we have to remember that in America, we're pretty blessed to be here. Yeah, we can't go to the concert that we wanted to go to or go on the vacation that we want to go on, but we can still worship Jesus. We can still love our family and we can still be on mission. Amen. So let's start off with our text today. And it says that Paul has a prayer that we all might have a relationship with the greatest gift ever given. So before we go any further, let's remember uh, the gift. In Isaiah 9, 6, it says, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. God gave the world a gift. And we celebrate that gift every year at Christmas. And that gift was a child, not just any child, the God child, born of a virgin, the Holy Son of God. He was brought into human history for us. The whole Bible's written about him, and he carries the world on his shoulders, and we can't ever forget that, that he has the strength to carry the world on his shoulders. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. And Paul tells us the entire plan of God to redeem this world was through the birth of Jesus, and that through his church, us, the church, this building is not the church, this empty vessel that we see here is not the church. We're the church. The world would come to know him. It doesn't matter whether these seats are full or not. Our mission doesn't change. It doesn't matter whether this building gets destroyed tomorrow. Our mission doesn't change. Our job through the church is to let the world know who Jesus Christ is. That the whole world, every nation, every people group, every single person has a path to salvation through him. Our job is to get that out. And with that being said, let's kind of get back into it. Amen. And Paul continues his wish for that plan to be fulfilled. In verse 14, it says, For this reason I bow my knees before the Father. The first thing Paul does is fall to his knees. In our Bible study this week, we talked about the revival of God's people, and that revival would start with God's people on their knees. If you didn't get a chance to see that Bible study, it was amazing. It was four men sitting around, talking about Jesus, talking about a revival in God's people that needed to happen, that this is a wake-up call, not for the world as much as I think it is for us as believers, that we are to fall on our knees, and that's where Paul started. He knows that it's only through God, the God of creation, that this plan would ever work. God always has a plan, even now. Look around you. You see God's plan in action. Neighbors helping neighbors. For the most part, politics have been put to the side. It's almost refreshing for me. I I don't like watching about the coronavirus. I don't like watching what's going on. I don't like that. But you know what I'm not seeing is a bunch of bickering and fighting amongst the politics. I don't see politics getting driven in my news feed. I see funny stuff like I saw about poor Tammy and her kids scraping her sticker off the car. I see people helping people. I see people posting videos of them cooking their food and walking their dogs and playing with their kids. Politics are put to the side. We now, again, have a common ground. We used to have a common ground in this country. We could fuss and fight all we wanted, but at the end of the day, we had a common ground, and we don't have that anymore, but we do now. We have a common enemy that is faceless, that's shameless, that's sexless, that's non-denominational in this virus. And we're seeing a nation that is turning to God. I said it last week and I'll say it this week. Our Facebook traffic is 15 to 20 times higher than it's ever been. We had more people watch that video than almost all the videos we've ever put on Facebook combined. Our last week, our video of this service has reached 4,000 people. God is at work. 
And we, our job is to let everybody know that that gift is available for everybody, and that's what we're doing today. And even though we're undeserving, we have that chance to redeem our relationship with him through Christ. Everyone has that chance. Paul says in verse 1 of chapter 3 in Ephesians that he has been sent, he was, had been sent and imprisoned for the Gentiles, that his purpose is to do whatever it takes to get the message out. He uses the technology of his day, just like we're using right now. He suffered and even got imprisoned for it. Paul used messengers to go out. Paul wrote things down and sent letters. Paul traveled by sea, traveled by land to get the word out of Jesus. Paul used the technology of his day, just like we're using today. By God's grace, we were blessed to do this. I remember, and John can remember back in 2012, we tried to do this and with an epic fail. <laughs> we, had a, we had a handy cam up on a corner of a deal out there, and we tried to wire up a microphone up here, and it was just a horrible video and a horrible sound, but we had this vision for some reason that this technology was going to be needed someday. And by God's grace, we have that opportunity. And we should use this time to reflect on our mission and our walk with Christ. We should be praying and thankful for all God has done. We should be praying that God will reveal himself to others through us in this. That we could be a part of carrying out his plan. That we could be the church God has called us to be and give the gift of salvation to all who will listen to us. People, this is a great opportunity for us. As believers, we should be excited about this. That so many people are turning and looking to God. So many people are asking questions. So many people are seeking God's face. What an amazing opportunity for us. I mean, I, you know, when you're at the grocery store, be nice. When you see someone offer to take a lady's cart, and she goes, you sure you want to touch it? And I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> right? I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Let me get your cart for you. Right? When I'm walking around and I see people, I, I try to give them way because they're trying to do things. We went to little Walmart in Derby yesterday, and there wasn't very many people. And I saw this older couple walking around, and they had face masks on. And I, and I could tell they were freaking out. Anytime somebody got around them, so I gave them away, and I kind of smiled and nodded. I, I saw an old, old gentleman in Dillon's this week walking around trying to find things to shop. And it hurt my heart. He was looking for things that he couldn't find because there was nothing in his price range there. Because all the expensive stuff was left. If you see somebody like that, why don't you go get a gift card and give it to them as they're walking through. It's our time to shine, people, as believers. It's our time to shine. We should be out. We should be on our own walking revival. We should be the one. We, we should just be a revival in place everywhere we go. We, sh you know, we don't have to wait until these, this building fills up. We were talking this morning how many services are we going to have to have the first Sunday we come back? My gosh, we're thinking three or four just to be safe, unless we can do it out in the arena in a couple. People are going to be pouring in here, and they're going to be pouring in here because of the way that you act while you're out there. People are going to look to Christians for guidance and wisdom and love and compassion and grace and mercy. But what happens is a lot of the times we get caught up in this craziness as believers, right? Because we're all scared, amen? We're all scared. When you go to the store, do you see people loading up six gallons of milk? You want to load up six too? I get it. But we have got to be the calm in the storm. That's why the revival starts on our knees as Paul did in verse 14. We are on our knees first. Before you go out, get on your knees. God, protect me from the craziness around me. God, let me anchor to this rock of your son, Jesus. So when I go out, I can be Jesus. Amen. And in verse 15, uh, God is sovereign over all things. And this is the one thing that we got to remember. From whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, right? Right? God the Father, the creator of all things, is also the one who names, defines our identity of all, creator, of all creation. Every creature on this earth, God named. Every creature on this earth got a, their name from Jesus. You, me, everyone. Even to the extreme of naming every family in heaven and on earth. 
God's present action in the naming of every family is a further proof of his sovereignty over all creation. That God knew you in the womb, it says in the Bible. God knew you in the womb. He numbered every hair on your head. That means that everything happening right now, God is in working through it. You know, it's times like this that make me lean on God more, right? It, it, and when I read verses like this and I get into God's Word, and I've got to tell you, I've been in God's Word more in the last two weeks than I think I have in the last six months. And I'm in God's Word a lot. But I have sure been digging in it because I need to find that inner strength, right? That inner peace. That core. And I lean on things like this when I know God's sovereign in everything. Over heaven and earth. That God's in control, right? And we're all part of a bigger family in Jesus. We as believers are adopted and we take the name of our Father in heaven. Follower, child of God, saint. What a glorious day to be alive. Some of you don't see that. But this is a glorious day to be a believer, right? Let's say that this is the end times. And some people have asked me, do you think this is the end times? I don't know. God says we'll never know the day or the time. I don't like to think about that. But if it is, what a glorious day to be a part of it. That means we're a part of something big. That God wants us to be involved in it, right? Right? That we could be a part of God's revival. This is God's revival. This is him telling all the world, you need to turn to me. And if his believers are not ready, we will not be prepared for the influx that's about to come. We're seeing a stirring in the hearts of everyone. A small flame starting to molder and smolder inside of people's hearts. We're seeing a movement. We're seeing a movement. We're seeing a revolution. And I mean, I don't know about you, but a lot of people ask me questions. A lot of people are reaching out and asking me things. People that, that don't go to church and people that I, I don't associate with here. But here's what I do know. God is counting on his children to move with it. Right? And we have to draw our strength from God because right now it's hard. I know it's hard. I know it's scary, but we have to draw our strength from God. And we all have an inner strength that we need to tap into. And this is really what this is about today is this inner strength. It says that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being. And we all have that inner strength powered by the Holy Spirit. We just got to tap into it. We just have to tap into it. It's like plugging into a light socket. A light won't turn on if it's not what? Plugged in. We have to plug in to the Spirit. It's called your soul, your heart, right? That we all have access to it. It's called prayer. It's called staying in God's Word. And it's called being with believers, right? It's called staying connected. And that's why it's so important right now we stay connected. How many texts have you sent this week, believers, to people that you know and love? Checking on them. How many phone calls have you made? to people that you know and love, to your own Bible study or small group? Are you reaching out and connecting? Are you helping? We have this inner strength that we have got to tap in the Holy Spirit. We need to tap that strength. Now more than ever, we have to tap into that strength. The Holy Spirit that lives in the hearts of all believers, we have to tap in the strength. The Bible says a mustard seed of faith will move mountains. A mustard seed of faith, a metaphor for you can do a lot of things with that inner strength. You can do things that you wouldn't have thought you could do. You can say things that you wouldn't have thought you could say. You can help people like you never thought that you could with that inner strength, that mustard seed of faith. As tra Satan tries to pull us apart, to separate us from each other and Jesus, we need to remember this. And this is Romans 8, 37 through 39. Now, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor the things present, nor the things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us. Ready for this, church? 
from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. I think we all ought to take this verse, print it out, and tape it all around your house. Nothing will separate us from the love of God. Nothing. No virus. No quarantine. No stay at home in place. No nothing can separate you from the love of God. God's wherever you go. Jesus is wherever you go. Holy Spirit is wherever you go. You can sit down and have a conversation with Jesus. You can draw your strength from Jesus. But we can't forget that there is nothing that will separate us from the love of God. Amen? And I know a lot of people feel separated right now. And here's something that we all need to hear. Verse 17. So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and the length and the height and the depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God, that every one of God's children would come to a point where we all could comprehend the breadth of God's love for each one of us. Times like this where we feel separated, right? Isn't it? I got to get rid of the stool. I got to stand. I can't preach like that. The breath of God's love for each one of us, the way that he loves us, the way that he embraces us, the way that he surrounds us with his love, right? We've got to, we can comprehend that in the spirit. If we draw our strength from the spirit, we can comprehend the love that he has for us all. And then we can shine that love out. The height of God's grace and mercy toward his children. The depth of his compassion for his family. God heart, God, God's heart breaks every time one of us is separated from the Holy Spirit, that we don't draw our strength from him. And to know the love of Christ that surpasses all knowledge, to see someone through his eyes. As you're walking through the store, wouldn't you love to see people through his eyes? See the hurt and the scare and the fear in people. To be able to reach out with his hands. To when you see that, to be able to reach out to people. To be compassionate for people like he is. There'd be more toilet paper, right? I mean, honestly. So I did go to the store uh, yesterday and I was pleasantly surprised to see potatoes on the shelf and onions on the shelf. And flour on the shelf and sugar on the shelf until I got around to the toilet paper and the paper towel off. I don't get it. We, we sure would be acting differently if we drew our strength from Jesus. We wouldn't be running out to buy toilet paper. We would get what we needed and we would make sure everybody else had it. We wouldn't clean out the flour bin. We would get what we needed. But I see believers just alike doing the same thing. People, we have to step up and be the church. That we might be filled with the Spirit. That there is no more room for yourself. See, when we get filled with the Spirit, we void ourselves of ourselves. It's called dying to self. It's called dying to us. It's filling with the Spirit. So there's no more room left in us but that. That your selfish desires, your need to put yourself first would be gone. That you would solely exist to glorify God. That's what the world needs to see today. The world needs to see people that are living out their lives through Christ. That we draw our strength from something that's not of this world. It doesn't matter what the president says. It doesn't matter what the governor says. It doesn't matter what your work says. It doesn't matter what your savings account looks like. It doesn't matter what the stock market's doing. That we draw our strength from Christ. That at the end of the day, to ashes we will return. To dust we will return. That we're all temporary on this earth. Amen? Paul Tripp says this, Imagine what the world would look like if every person existed with the sole intent to glorify God. Oh, Imagine what it would be like to participate in a society where the heart of every citizen was captured by the awe of God. And we wouldn't be worried about anything right now, would we? 
you know, we might shelter in place. We might do some things to protect the people that we love the most, but we wouldn't be panicking. We wouldn't be rushing out to get things that we don't need. We would listen to our government because we would know that the, God put the government in place. And if the government said, hey, we need you to stay at home for two weeks, that everybody would do that. I saw where companies are opening up because they can. Not because they need to, but because they can. Because they're chasing a dollar. That hurts my heart. That hurts my heart. And there are companies that you would have never thought of. The time for us as followers, not fans of Jesus, is right now. This country is ready. The hearts of people are softened, and we have to strike when the iron is hot. You know, I talked about equipment that we're going to get to do our Bible study better and to do some Bible verses of the week and do some things that will help people get through this time. Because right now, as we're seeing the traffic on our Facebook page and the traffic on our YouTube page and the phone calls that we're getting and the emails that we're getting, the time is now to strike. It's time for a revival for us and for this country. I think this is not just a wake-up call for this country, but it's a wake-up call for every believer out there that the time is now. The time is always now. The time for to reach people is now. I don't care if it's normal or not normal. I don't care if there's a pandemic or not. The time is now. We should be always drawing our strength from Christ. We should always see people through Jesus' eyes. We should always love people the way that He loves we should always void ourselves of ourselves and fill ourselves with the Spirit. And too many people don't do that. Let me tell you the sad part. Four weeks ago, I could barely get 60 people out of 600 in here on a Wednesday night to learn a little bit more about Jesus, to give a little bit more of their time. Now I got 1,400 of them watching me on a Facebook page. It makes me chuckle a little bit. It makes me weep more. Now you can't do anything but watch. Now you can't do anything but show up. Now you can't do anything but change your jammies, right? Because God is saying, it's time to turn to me. If you want revival, I'm going to give you a revival. And if you don't pay attention, it will be much worse next time. I think this is a wake-up call for us all. So if you're a believer out there, down that lens, right there, down that lens, you need to stop worrying about what's going on out in that world, and you better start worrying about what's going on inside this book and inside this heart. Because when this is all over and you go back to your busy life, you better make time for God. You better make time to reach people for Jesus because that's what God has called you to do. I have said it for 10 years, and I will preach it until they put me in a box on this stage and take me out this door. Our mission your mission. It's our mission. We are the church. This building is not a church. If, if I could take a camera, and I will one day, and I'll walk around this building for all of you people all over the country and all over the world that are watching this that, that need Jesus, and amen, we love you for that. This building could become a, a garage tomorrow. It's not your traditional church. It's built that way. This is just a place for us to meet, to get refilled, rejuvenated, and get back out there amen. to reach people. And that's what God is calling you to do. To give the greatest gift, we've got to give God the glory. And this is Ephesians 3, 20 through 21. And this is out of the message. It says, God can do anything, you know, for far more than you could ever imagine or guess or request in your wildest dreams. He does it not by pushing us around, but by working within us, his spirit deeply and gently within us. Glory to God in the church. Glory to God in the Messiah, in Jesus. Glory down all the generations. Glory through all millennia. Oh, yes. You see, to give the greatest gift, we have to give up something. Sometimes what we crave the most. To give the greatest gift, sometimes we have to give up what we crave the most. Our self, our identity. Sometimes you have to give up, amen? Amen. We must give God the praise, give God the credit, turn our hearts over to him to realize how important the gift of salvation really is. 
If we do that, the world will see the gift for what it truly is, life-changing. So the time for the revival of the hearts of God's people is now. Amen? It's time to press into the strength of Jesus. It's time to embrace the Holy Spirit. And it's time to stand on the rock and unchanging word and character of Jesus. The time is now, people. I, I don't know how else to say it. The time for the revival in God's people is now. The time for God's church to step up and to be the light to a lost world is now. We have purpose now. We have a purpose now like we've never had. We have an audience now like we've never had. We have an opportunity now like we've never had. And if we don't step up, I fear it'll be too late. Amen? Now we're going to hear from the greatest pastor ever. God said there's coming a day when I'm going to shake the world. But some things will not be shaken. Some things remain. In other words, there's coming a time when the world will be pressed and there'll be no way out. Those times come in your life, in your home. Tension, friction, financial trouble. You're pressed and there doesn't seem to be a way out. There is an answer, there is a way. Jesus said, I am the way. But in the midst of all this changing, there are some things that never change. Think of it a moment. What never changes? The nature of God doesn't change. God hasn't changed. He hasn't changed to adapt himself to our generation. God is unchanging. I am the Lord God, I change not. God is unchanging in His holiness. We're all guilty of coming short of God's holy requirements. And we're all sinners and we're all in need of the grace and mercy of God. And that's why the Lord Jesus came and died on the cross. He died for your sins. He died for mine. And God took your sins and laid them on Christ. God changes not in His holiness. And let me tell you, because He is our holy God, he is also unchanging in his judgment. There is a judgment day coming. Our God is a consuming fire. The Bible is filled with stories of judgment. Our Lord talked more about hell than he did heaven. There is a day of judgment coming. God is a holy God. And you and I are going to stand there. And when I stand there, I'm not going to ask for justice. I'm going to ask for mercy. I need mercy. I need the grace of God. I need the forgiveness of God. And I want to tell you a wonderful thing. God loves you and he offers you tonight forgiveness and he offers you mercy. God can forgive every sin you've ever committed. God can wipe the slate clean because of Christ. Not because you deserve it. For by grace are ye saved through faith in that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You can't work your way to heaven. You can't buy your way to heaven. God is unchanging. He's unchanging in his love. God loves you. That's the most wonderful thing to go to bed with at night, to know that God loves me. God forgives me. God is interested in me. But I must receive him. Secondly, the word of God does not change. The grass withereth and the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. I settled that a long time ago. There are a lot of things in this Bible I don't understand. There are questions you could ask me that I cannot answer. I don't know all the answers in this book. How can a finite mind like mine comprehend the infinite? I cannot. So one day I opened the Bible and I said, Oh Lord, I accept this as your word by faith. 
and that settled it from that moment on. When I quote the scriptures, I know that I'm quoting the Word of God. It's a living Word. And lastly, the way of salvation has not changed. All these centuries, the way to the kingdom of God is exactly the same. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. He will never change. But you must change. All right, so the time is now, amen? So this is for you down the lens. Um, some of you are here and don't know Jesus, and you're here searching because you're lost, and you don't understand what's going on, and you don't understand why things are happening, and, and you're questioning yourself, you're questioning things, but you're scared, and you're looking for Jesus. So here's what I want to tell you. You don't have to come to church to do that. You can do that right where you're at and right where you sit. So I'm going to pray with you as we go, and part of that prayer is going to be for you and give you some guidance and some understanding of what you need to do. Right where you're at and right where you sit, you need to pray to Jesus. You need to ask for forgiveness. You need to admit that you're a sinner and, sinner and repent. And you also need to believe that Jesus came and walked this earth and that he was crucified for you and died on a cross and rose on the third day and now rules and reigns in heaven. And you give God that little bit of faith and he'll give you all of his faithfulness. And you can start this journey with us right here every Sunday, every Thursday, every day that you're with us until you can come be with us. So my new hashtag is until we hug again. Amen. We are hugging church. We're a loving church and we want to hug some necks and I've even had emails from people telling me that when we come back, we need to have a three-hour social hour before church so that we can all get together and love on each other and weep and cry and be prepared for the Word. So this is for you down there that don't know Jesus. Let's pray, shall we? Father God, we love you. God, these are times that we don't understand. These are times that we can't comprehend. And just like Billy Graham said, I don't understand everything in this book but i do believe it and have faith in it so god i know you're going to be on the other side of this i know that we're going to anchor to you through this i know that this is hard for a lot of us and i see the struggle out there i see the hurt out there in people's posts and in their videos of them wanting to be with church and how being together virtually is not as good and i agree god it's not but that's how we have to do it that's the cards that we're dealt so father be with us and give us strength that we can go out and be your church. Because God, at the end of the day, that's what this is all about. You're giving us an opportunity to be your church. To reach your people, the ones that you have designed to us. The ones that you have put in our path. So God, let us go out and be the church. Let us start the revival in us first. And then let it spread like a fire to the rest of the world. And to those down this lens, God, that don't know you. God, I pray for them. I pray that they seek your face today. That they drop to their knees and admit that they are a sinner in need of a Savior. That they believe that your Son walked this earth. That he was born of a virgin, walked this earth. Was crucified on a cross. For all of our sins. Rose on the third day. And now rules and reigns in heaven. God, let them have that little bit of faith. And God, I pray you will go and wrap them in your faithfulness. Let the Spirit pour on them. And God, let us guide them this way until we can meet again. Father, thank you for this opportunity that you've given us this technology to do this, that we can reach the masses when we can't be together. God, we love you. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.